assumption is so funny. Okay, the French people are skinny people who smoke a ton but love South America. <laughs> Sunny YouTube and welcome back to the Not Even French channel where we talk about everything that's a little bit francophile, life in France, life in New Zealand and all of that good stuff from someone who lived in France for six years, has a French husband and is generally obsessed with France. Sorry if you guys can hear a lot of noise in the background, it is pouring down with rain right now, it just started bucketing down. I oh, hope it's not too loud on the video. Anyway, now in today's video, I wanna be talking about the truth about French people because I asked you guys what your assumptions were about French people and I wanna to respond to these with the truth based on my opinion, my experience actually living in France. Let's get into some of these assumptions that you guys have about French people. So the first one's about religion and the assumption is that there are very few faith communities in France. And, and, and few French who love God, okay? So in France, there's a very strict separation between church and the state. That means that religion cannot be present in school, you cannot wear religious symbols. You know, when you get married, you have to get married civilly, like they have a civil ceremony first. And then if you want to as well get married in a church, that's your, you know, that's your prerogative but you know everything's separated in theory anyway and so what this means is that religion in France is viewed as a very very private thing it's something that you don't really shout about a concept is that you have your religion and you have the right to have that religion but you're not publicly demonstrating it I guess it is hard to get data on this in France because they're not allowed to ask certain um, questions even around like ethnicity and you know, things like that um, in their census. It can be quite tricky, but there are a lot of religious communities in France, definitely. Obviously the, the dominant religion would be Catholicism, and it's very common to, to meet people who have families that, you know, do the pilgrimages, like these long walks all down France and Spain, for example, or just from very Catholic families and, you know, they couldn't imagine them not having a, a, cer a ceremony in a church, for example, and that kind of thing. So I would say that religion's like alive and well in France. And another way that you know that Catholicism is alive and well in France is that look how many people came out to protest when the gay marriage bill passed. Just saying but there is this kind of mutual understanding that it doesn't come into the school it doesn't come into the workplace it doesn't come into um, you know anywhere public if that makes sense now the next assumption surprised me it's that the French people are unforgiving to mistakes in French I would say the opposite personally I would say that the French are very encouraging when you're speaking French even if you sound like a complete clown speaking French they'll be like so appreciative that you're speaking French like even when I was just starting, and I know I did not speak French very well, they're like, oh, tu parles super bien français. Like, they'd be like, oh, you speak so well. And they'd be so sweet. Very, very encouraging. So I honestly think they appreciate even the smallest effort. It doesn't matter if you make mistakes, really. If they are correcting you, it's because that's what they would want to be done for them. Like, they're very self-conscious often about the English level, for example, and they like it when people correct them because at least they learn, at least they know. So if they are correcting you, it's out of a place of, like, love and wanting you to progress and not out of, you know, just being a dick. This assumption is unfortunately true that they pee anywhere and they let their kids do too. So yes, especially males in France have a tendency to be able to pee anywhere in public and not really think for a second, oh, we share this space, oh, we're a community, oh, someone might walk through that and that would be really, really disgusting. They'll pee um, just in gutters, by cars, turn to, turn to a wall of a building, oh my gosh. Sorry, <laughs> my, my puppy. <laughs> you obviously heard her Emmy talking about peeing and pooing in France, didn't you? You would leave your poo all over the streets in Paris, wouldn't you? Oh, this is my, my brother's puppy that I'm babysitting. Her name is Honey, by the way. When we take Honey out for a walk in New Zealand, we go around with little poo-poo bags and we pick up her poo because that's what you do when you're living in a community, France. <laughs> Anyways, so yes. Um, and I have seen French people teaching their little boys, French women, French men teaching their little boys to pee against, yeah, as I said, against car tires, against walls, against trees, against whatever. That's why Paris smells down in the metro and, and by the river and everything and because it's so commonly accepted and they are trying to put in urinals and, and make public toilets better because they used to be paid. You know, I think they are trying to make it less of an issue, but I think I've got a long way to go. Okay, so the next assumption is 
actually very very deep and very culturally nuanced so um, I think it would need its a whole entire video just to cover this but it's the assumption that French people tend to critique you a lot but that it comes from a good place now this is difficult to say um, really does it always come from a good place obviously it depends on the person and everything but yes French people critique everything a lot not just you everything the way things look, the way things taste, the way things are, the way, you know, everything gets critiqued in France. It's, just, it's the way they were educated like that. It's a sign of intelligence to be able to do so, to be able to step back and critique things. Now, what this means is that it goes both ways. So critique can be a positive thing. They can very quickly pick up on small details like, oh, you look, you look slightly tanned. Um, have you been on holiday? Maybe you've lost literally one kilo. And they're like, oh, Rosie, have you lost weight? You know, like you, you might be wearing a new scarf. Oh, that scarf is new. It looks really nice on you. Like they'll very, they pick up on details very, very easily. However, it goes the other way around uh, as well. And so at work, you know, in terms of getting critiqued, you can really feel like, you're getting audited you know like you'll present a presentation and they'll be like can you change that font to size 12 and can you change that color from red to purple and um i don't think that that's right and i don't think you should put that photo and you know they do pick things apart part and they can critique i mean it is part of the french way and definitely a part of the french management style as well so yes french people are able to pick up on minor details and critique but i think you're right in that it doesn't um come from a, a bad place it's it's not personal um, they were educated like this uh, especially at work you, they can pick you apart and then you know you leave the me meeting room and you'll just be best friends I mean it's not personal it's professional or there's this whole this, this kind of common consciousness that it's for the betterment of all like they're just trying to help they're just trying to help you get better they're just gonna trying to help you progress they're just trying to help the idea be better I mean whatever it is it's sort of like it's it's a good thing to critique it's a bad thing would be complacency and just accepting things as status quo and never pushing things forward kind of thing. The next assumption is interesting and it's that the French are very serious and they say really did I see them laughing with friends at a cafe. I would say honestly it depends like go down to the south of France where you've had a couple of like drinks of pastis and things are getting a bit merry and there's a lot of laughter and music and all that kind of thing and but yeah I, I would say that um French people are they enjoy you know intelligent conversation and they exchange maybe a little bit differently. What I will admit is that you know, you know when you're just laughing and laughing and laughing until you cry and then someone snorts and and then you keep crying and you're just like like laughing until you're like literally tears streaming down your face this happened to me way way less in France honestly to be completely honest it was a very rare occurrence um I guess interaction is a bit different like like the humor is maybe a little bit more based on wit and puns and plays on yeah plays on words and intelligence and that kind of thing rather than just like plain stupid things that make you crack up laughing because they're ridiculous Okay, so the next assumption is that French people don't work long hours. Um, so the legal minimum is 35 hours per week. I would say in Paris we did work really quite long hours. Um, usually 9.30 to 7 p.m. would be the average, so I found that really long. However, we did get a one hour lunch break. I definitely don't think it's like a lazy, laid back work culture like the whole world kind of thinks in terms of a stereotype. I think I said in another video, France does have the world's seventh largest economy so they must be doing something right but what i would say is that they do take huge vacations so they they tend to work you know 215 to 220 days per year that would be like a standard contract in france so you know by the time you have all of the public holidays by the time you have your all of your vacation and everything like that you I mean you do get a lot of time off which is brilliant and it means that when you are at work you really can bring your all and that you are well rested and I think it works really well actually. Okay the next assumption is that French people generally enjoy more sort of cultured activities more around the arts and that kind of thing than they do sports as a hobby. So I would say it depends. So in Paris, yeah, you're going to find more people going out to the cinema, discussing the latest exhibitions and going to museums in their free time and that kind of thing than, than jogging, running, going to the gym. That is for sure. I completely agree with you. However, um, go down to certain regions of France, like uh, Grenoble, for example, the city, and everyone there is 
skiing, rock climbing, paragliding, like like mountain biking, like so many extreme sports and stuff. And I am very, very sporty. So I, I think it just depends on the region and what's on offer to you. The next assumption is that French people don't speak English. Now I've done a whole video on this. Basically the lowest in all of Europe except for a few random countries in Eastern Europe and it's a lot more complex than I can answer in this in this video so I'll leave the video down below and I'll link it and you guys can can watch that as well um, but it is an interesting topic for sure the next assumption is that they pay high taxes now when I arrived in France I thought it's not necessarily the taxes like if you google the French tax rate they don't seem that extortionate but it's the fact that you pay social charges and then taxes. Plus there are a lot of sort of other taxes that come up in France. Like you have to pay tax d'habitation, which is even when you're renting, like you don't even own the place, you have to pay a tax of hundreds of euros just for living in a place, for example. Like, yeah, stuff like that. I was like, oh my gosh, these guys get so taxed. But I've actually, again, I've done an entire video on, on this. If you're interested in how much like you could get paid in France and what would be actually left in your pay slip at the end of the month, I've done a whole video on this, which I will link and I will also put it in the description below as well so you can check that out afterwards. <laughs> Next assumption is so funny. Okay, the French people are skinny people who smoke a ton but love South America. <laughs> so the skinny thing we've talked about quite a lot. So in Paris they tend to be skinnier than in the regions. Um, but overall, yeah, they're, they're not suffering from obesity quite as much as other nations, I would say, yet anyway. Um, smoke a lot, yes. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, in France, way too much, way too much smoking. Smoking everywhere. Very young people smoking, high schoolers and that kind of stuff. I honestly don't get it. And love South America. Yeah, I think you're right. I think a lot of French, that's really hot right now, South America. Like a lot of French people I knew were going to like South America for their summer vacations, Peru, Patagonia, Chile. It was definitely like hot right now in terms of vacations, just kind of like Australia and New Zealand are, except South America's uh, not so far away compared to Australia and New Zealand. So I think it's, yeah, these destinations are kind of the dream destinations of French people for the moment. They cheat in relationships. Hmm, good question. So I actually did a whole video on this, so I'll put it down below. But basically, in a nutshell, they have relatively high levels of cheating, but not extortionate, you know, about average, like not, not super low levels, not super high levels. Um, but the difference is that maybe they're more honest about it, they're more open about it, they recognize that it can happen, it can be quite common, and that's maybe where that perception comes from. The next assumption is that the French are always late. Now, France is, you know, there's different ways to look at a culture, and one of them is through the concept of time. And there are what we call time flexible cultures and uh, time kind of rigid cultures, I guess. So, more maybe like Germany, where if you're starting at 5, you're there at 4.55 kind of thing. Um, and yeah, France is definitely more a time flexible culture. So, this means that if the meeting's starting at 1, around one is fine being five minutes late won't, won't you know your boss won't judge you you won't get in trouble like that kind of thing and you know if people give you time to show up being 10 15 20 minutes late isn't the end of the world so definitely more time flexible the final assumption is that spices and chilies are not for them and they would rather eat bland food and call it savory so oh a little dig there at french food so it depends on who you ask i guess because a lot of people are saying that french food is the best food on the planet um bland i don't know i i think it it, it it depends who you're asking right it's definitely not punchy and hot and full of flavors and experiences and that kind of thing it it, it makes the most of simple delicious ingredients right so you might have a meat a bit of potato and a delicious sauce and that will make a perfect meal in france and if you're used to having like different layers of spice and complexity with all these different flavors and aromas working together on your tongue and that kind of thing and you've got sweet hair and spicy hair and that kind of thing yeah maybe you would find french food a little bit boring it depends on where you come from but it's true that they're not good with hot food and spicy food just because they're not used to it and um, the first meal that I ever made for Niels was actually a Thai green curry and I chopped up real chilies, green chilies, and put it in the curry and honestly he almost died. <laughs> he was like, ah, 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 ah. he was using his serviette to like clean his tongue. It was so bad, so embarrassing. 
um, and that's when I learnt that lesson the hard way that spices and the French are like a little bit less of a, of a good match. <laughs> cool guys, well I hope you enjoyed this video. I have actually done a couple of these videos now so I'll link them down below in case you want to keep binge watching them. Let me know down below if any of these assumptions or my responses to them kind of surprised you, you agree, disagree. I would love to hear from you down in the comments below. I'll keep the conversation going. Otherwise, I will see you next time on the Not Even French channel. Bisous and a bientôt.